We're going to start out with Kevin sharing screen and making the presentation, and then we're going to do a demo on my screen. So. Oh boy, let's see. Everybody see that? Yes. yes. Just hit play. Hang on. Yeah, and scroll up to, yeah, there you go. All right. So today we're gonna learn about sorting and calling out photos and evaluating and doing what they call a survey of photos in Lightroom Classic. So the premise is you've gone out, you've taken some pictures in the morning or afternoon for that day, you come home and what do you do with them? And here's how you can compare some images that you've taken for the day without looking at them one at a time. Um, <clears throat> You can go to library mode. You can click on one image. And then you can hold the command key on a Mac or control on Windows and click other images in that screen. So here I've got seven images. I'm going to pick three. And then you type the letter N, and this is what you get. So you can see your images a little bit bigger. And then, oops, I went backwards, sorry. And then if you want to X out of one of those images, you say, well, that doesn't go together. I want to delete it off my display. You hover over the picture and an X will appear in the right hand bottom corner and you click it, and the picture goes away. Window Zoom meeting. Two point. Uh, is somebody got not muted there? Is that yes. me? I think that's Kent. Kent, can you mute, mute please? And um, so then, if you want to see the pictures a little bit larger, you can hit the Tab key, and. Once you're done, you can go back by hitting the tab key again. Oh, darn it. Now there's other ways to look at and view your photos. And if you look at the bottom left-hand corner of your display screen, it shows these little icons and you have like a library view, which shows everything that's uh, on that data that you mm -hmm. want to have showing. Got a single picture. It has uh, side by side and different modes of uh, putting them together. That's just the information. It's always down in the corner there. Oops. I got to leave the meeting. I'll see everybody on Friday. Okay. <laughs> Lawrence, good seeing you. So then once you've selected the picture that you want to work on or edit, you type the letter D or up in the top right of the toolbar is the word develop. You can click on that. And that will bring you up to turn it. Now you're in the develop mode. Did I skip something? I think I skipped something there. All right, anyway, uh, to select a group of images uh, after you've done your editing, hang on. Okay, so. 
I have to skip around here. Something happened in my slides. Um, once you're in that uh, development mode, the easiest way to develop a picture is to hit this auto button and it's in the basic panel on the right hand side. And once you hit that, you can use the backslash key or the Y key to compare that image or any other image that you've edited with the original image. In this case, the image on the left being the original and the right is the um, edited one. And then you can sync all this stuff. And you can select one photo that you've edited. And next, you hit the command key or control key and highlight all the rest of the images that you want to sync to that photo. And in the right hand bottom corner of your screen is a sync button. Hit that, you'll get this uh, text box up. You hit synchronize, and all the photos will match up. Now, this will become a little clear. We're going to do a demo. Um, now you want to use what's called presets. You want to make it faster to get things done. And so you, over in the left hand column is the word presets. You're going to click on the down arrow and then scroll over all those little things. It says like style, portraits, and then color, created black and whites. You can find uh, a myriad of those little presets. You hover over the preset and it will show up on your picture. When you don't click it, it won't affect anything. But when you want it to take effect, like if you want that style futuristic, you can click it and it will take effect. Now to get rid of that, you can go control Z. So at this time, I've hired a highly intelligent assistant from across the universe. He dropped into uh, <clears throat> our midst via balloon. And um, Steve, uh -huh. would you like to take over the screen and we'll go through a demonstration with some photos that you've taken today. Okay, you, you need to hit stop screen, I yep. mean stop share, whatever. Okay. Find, where's my mouse at? Oh, there. Okay, can everybody see my screen now? No, I haven't stopped sharing. Oh, okay. I can't see no screen. Okay. Okay. So let's go to Lightroom. It just so happened that I took some pictures today, this morning, and um, okay. I've, I've loaded them. Right. Somebody who's talking. Yeah. Steve, can you make me co-host and I'll deal with that? I already made you co-host. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. So um, I went out and took some pictures. And um, these are just out of the camera. Um, so Kevin, based on what you were uh, explaining, what, what do you think the first thing I should do is? Well, if you like two or three of those pictures that you want to evaluate, uh -huh. you can click on one picture, that first one that you have there. Okay. And then push the command key or the control key and select one or two more pictures. Oh, okay. by clicking on them. Let me, let me try um, three of them. These three look interesting. Okay, I've selected them. Okay. And um, and now else? type the letter N. Okay, can, uh, can everybody see those uh, four that I selected? Yeah. And it looks to me 
like the this one here looks out of focus, so I don't think it's a candidate. So did you see how he hovered over the picture and the X appeared in the bottom corner? You see that X there? So that's what he did. He just clicked on that X and that picture was removed from this display here. And uh, the remaining three, I'm still uncertain. Um, so do you want to enlarge them? Yeah, how can I do okay, that? Okay, hit the tab key. Oh, that's nice. Um, I think the top, well, all of them are going to need some background cleaning up. And uh, I think that- Do you want to go back to the normal screen? Sure. Okay, hit the tab key again. All right, I did. And I, I'm going to get rid of this one on the bottom because uh, it's a- uh, too short at the bottom, I think. So okay. now I'm down to two. I'm gonna hit tab again. So yeah. now that you're done with that, and why don't you show them the, the uh, different views down in the bottom left there. Okay. That's the grid view. Yeah. This will be individual. Ooh. This would be X and Y. All right. And this would be, uh, well, if I had more select, this could be more. Um, so, and people, which there's no people here. So uh, it would pick out the ones with people. This spray can, I've never figured out how to use it. So I've never bothered with it. Okay. Um, let's go back. To, let's say this is the one then that uh where i can hit the letter d uh and yes when you want to go to develop the letter d will take you to develop or you can just hit that develop word with your cursor okay one of your tips said to hit auto so yeah that, that would be the that's that's what we're saying is the easiest way to develop your pictures this kind of let uh lightroom do the work for you it's going to select all the parameters, and there it is. All right, let me click on auto. <clears throat> and I think I want to, I think I want all the ones I select to be uh, a one by one. So let me choose that. And I want to position this. This uh, basically trying to follow the rule of thirds. It, uh, a little bit of, I think this is a little better. Okay, so I've done that. And now how am I gonna synchronize this with the rest of my pictures? Okay, so the idea is to, again, you're gonna use the command key. And with that down in the bottom row of pictures, you're going to select the picture that you want and click all the other ones that you want to have that same settings applied to. Okay, I've actually clicked them all. And now down at the bottom right column is the word sync. All right, I'm going to click on sync. And In this uh, I've got check all. If, you, if I didn't want um, the crop, I could undo that. But I want this crop, okay. Uh, so let me hit synchronize. So it's happening fast, but you can see the, the pictures on the bottom will now carry all of those settings. So the sliders on the right hand side will all be basically the same. Hang on a minute. Let's check. Uh, okay. We see what the settings are here. You get an, uh, let's uh, say exposure is uh, plus 0.78. So um, that doesn't change. So this here, if I go to library and uh, grid, and let's pick this one, go to D, uh, hit D for develop. Yeah. And it's exactly the same settings as the others. 
Um, uh, let me go back to library and, uh, I want to, let me, uh, based on what you said before, I'm going to pick these bottom three. Oh, wait a minute. I've, they're all selected. Hang on. I can go up to edit, select none. Okay. And I'm going to select these three, hit the letter N. And I don't think I want, this is not a very good looking flower here on the bottom. <laughs> I'll get rid of it. This one looks a little out of focus. This one, it's a very shallow depth of field, but I like it. I like the overall effect. And um, Kevin uh, talked about presets. So let me go to it, develop, and let's look here at some presets that I can use. It's already got the original, I mean, the synced settings but maybe i want to refine it i could do it two ways i could go through all of these steps myself or i could check out some presets and um, we can just kind of scroll down and see till we find one that we think is is pretty good oh uh, i'm gonna have to pause for one second my uh commanding officer is here Okay. 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 So, okay. So, if somebody, if somebody really likes one of these, let me know. Yeah, we could go on forever on this, but um, now this is a preset I created, and I've got this in my import. When I import pictures, I apply this preset. Um, anyhow, let, let's, uh, we can go all over the map here. Now, a lot of these presets are th presets that I bought. So you're seeing a lot more than you'll probably see on your, on your computer. Let's go with, I saw clarity. Uh, that's just a little too bright. Oh, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna pick one and stick with it. Let's go with this one for now. So I've applied that. Huh? Okay. Um so any any questions on that or Kevin? Is there something else I need to do now with this? No, just that um at the end of all this. Um, you can go back and use some of the other tools, like you could uh, put the command button in and uh, or use the backslash and the Ys to evaluate that photo against the original. Oh, uh, that's, yeah, that's a good one. Let's uh, the backslash. There's the original. And then if I want them together, what do I do? The Y. Well, the y, y key. Yeah. So any of these things, these are, uh, you know, keyboard shortcuts to do those. You can find all of these tools up in the toolbar and the menus and stuff, but um, uh, I think they're good. Now, the, the last shortcut is um, if you want to undo something, uh, the long way is to go to the top of the screen and click edit and then undo. Or you can see there the command Z is the shortcut. Uh, highlight that. See the command Z? So if you type command and Z, you can undo the preset. And then another way to do this is to go to history. You want to look at the history of this photo? Yeah, let's go back up and look at the history. There's the history of what we've done. And I can I can uh, pick, there's what it came in as. This is another, this is paste settings, paste settings, and the preset. Like I can pick any one of these and uh, 
and then export it as a JPEG. And then if I say, and then I could go, I could go to another one and I could also export it as a JPEG. So. And how would you delete each? A you significant one. A no, no, you don't one. have to delete. Let's say um, from the metadata, this is how it originally came. If I go file, export, and I'm going to put it in a subfolder, JPEG, add to the catalog. And so I export it. Now I go down here and let's go to paste settings. Uh, let's go to the preset one. Let's say I also want it. I haven't made up my mind yet, which I want to print. So I'll go file, export with previous, and it's gonna say that number already exists, use a unique name. So I click that. So now if I go to go folder in library and I click on this carrot, there's my JPEG and there's two of them. And yet, and the original up uh, in the folder above has not changed. That's one. Th the great thing about Lightroom is you never lose your original. So um, I, I think we've gone as deep as we want to go in one lesson, uh, but is, does anybody have any questions at this point? Comments? You're using the Lightroom Classic or Lightroom Cloud? This is Lightroom Classic. Okay, so all that's on your computer. Yes, uh, Lightroom Classic to me is, uh, well, I, I just prefer it. Then that's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing a lot of these uh, tools that we're using, the shortcut keys, are universal across any Lightroom uh, mobile or, I mean, not mobile, but. Yeah, most of them are. You just have to play around with them. Um, in the presentation, um, I did have a screen that, uh, or a slide that lists a lot of the shortcuts we didn't talk about. They're more, uh, I'll call them advanced. And um, we're gonna make a PDF out of it and we'll post it in the files or post it on the thing so that everybody can printed out, but just as a reminder, the Adobe website with tutorials and information is where I got this in info. So you can click on Adobe and ask for help and type shortcuts and you'll get all kinds of information about keyboard shortcuts, et cetera. So it's- uh -oh. uh, yeah, we have a little uh, kind of, let me uh, just throw one more at you that I really like, and that's the letter L when you're in develop. And what I like about it is if you're looking at this picture and you want to say, well, gee, do I really like it this way? But you're distracted by things left and right. So I hit the letter L. And now I, all I see in my vision is the photo. Mm -hmm. The other sides are kind of, if I hit L again, they go completely black. Hit L again, and it comes back. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, I, I that's a keyboard shortcut I really like. Uh, All anybody, right. Anybody have any, requ any requests, questions? Anything we can show you while we're here? I have just one more question. Between the Lightroom Classic and the CC, it's either one or the other. No, you can. You, I've got both on my computer, but I, I never use the other one. But I could if I wanted to. Okay. The there's an advantage, and you can sync the two. You can sync with your phone. As a matter of fact, mine, I, I think most of them, I, on my phone, I can open Lightroom and see my photos that are, that are cataloged. But um, the, the advantage 
of using the uh, C of using the Lightroom that's not Lightroom Classic is all the work is stored in the cloud, which the 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 cloud is the magic word. What it really means is they've got a huge server farm somewhere um, where everything is uh, more hard drives than even Linda has. <laughs> uh, storing all of that information so it's amazing where we've came with the internet software mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact if you're in some of these new the new stuff in photoshop on the neural filters that um, some of that is done with artificial intelligence uh, at Adobe and then sent back to your computer. Mm. Um, so, well, it's uh, it's just three thirty-seven. Is there? How can we entertain you? <laughs> Well, how about this? How would you like to see what I would do with more development on that that one? Which one was that I liked best? Yeah. Anybody want to see the kind of editing I might do on this? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, this will this will be just a demonstration. Um, so the for me, first of all. If you look over here on the left, I've got the basic. Uh, on the panel. other left, I mean the other left, the top, the le the the right side. On the right side, I've got the basic panel. All the other panels I have closed. Why is that? If I click tone curve, just it opens. Effects, just it. I want to go back to basic that. This is something I just learned this week. If you go to one of the dark areas and you right click, you can go to solo mode. And I love that because then you're not having to scroll up and down all the time. You just pick what you want. Now, what I would do with this is if I, uh, I would uh, go back, I would start with auto, okay? And then I would check. Uh, you just I'm, turned auto off. Well, it goes, well, now that I've clicked it, it goes. Uh, I see it's auto setting. Since I've used it, it blacks out. You, you can't do auto twice. No. But then I hear the white balance. I just take a look and see, no, that's too warm that's too dark so i am pretty much leave that the way uh, it came exposure i'm going to i may come back to exposure i want to this is, may seem counterintuitive but i'm going to highlight and i'm going to increase shadows i i do that a lot and now i look up here at my histogram and i can bring up my whites And uh, this is already fuzzy, so I'm not sure if texture is going to be good or bad. Yeah, I think <laughs> increasing texture, clarity, I like that. Mm -hmm. The haze, I kind of like that. Then let me look at the tone curve. I Medium contrast, let's try that color grading let's uh again we can play with this color wheel here on the midtones and pretty much like that where it is but i could bring them a little brighter shadows make them a little stand out a little more uh, okay and then um I might want to uh, give it a, a, a vignette. 
I'm getting close to something I would like, but um, let me go back to basics. I'm not sure whether I want to do this or not, but let me try it. And then I can always undo it. I'm going to go to mass and I'm going to choose background. Now, when I make my adjustments, it's just going to be on the background. So I can make it brighter. I can make it darker. Mm -hmm. I could go all the way like this. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, I think I kind of like it about there. But when I do that, and then I can, uh, this mask, I can invert it. And now it's just on this, and I could change just adjustments on it now. But I'm pretty happy with where it is. But having done these, now uh, uh, I'm create a new mask because when I did the background, it also included this stem. So I'm gonna select objects, make this a little smaller and just kind of go over that. And it's gonna detect the object for me. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. And I wanna bring that up a little. No, that's... Okay, kind of like there. I'm done with the masking at this point. And now I feel like on my cropping, I'm just a little bit, I, I'm gonna keep the one by one, but I have a little bit too much space at the top. And okay, now admittedly, this is not, a, this is not an award-winning photo, but um, oh, before and after. There's what we started with. There's after, or get the Y. Mm. Before oh. and after. Mm -hmm. Nice approval. Uh, which one do you like? The right. E. <laughs> y. <laughs> okay. Um, now, obviously, I I could go into Photoshop and create a different background, but uh, I'm pretty happy with this as it is. Hey, uh, Steve. Yeah. Would Would you mind scrolling down the toolbar, go past color grading, and that bring the rest of that up? Sure. Yeah. Color grading. Um, Detail. There's What's a sharp the, effects. That's effects. The, that is vignetting. And you can also increase the grain. No. What is uh, transform? Just a second. Uh, transform. Where do you see transform? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The list. Well, yeah, while well, we're at the lens correction, this it corrects for whatever lens you're using because the lenses, this is something you couldn't do in film. Lenses always have some various effects. And with software, they, those can be corrected. So now transform, that's... Uh, where you can uh you can oh yeah that huh. wow. oh and you can constrain crop if you want that means it's going to fill you can also see where this hash was what looks like a hashtag you can click that and then um, let's say, let's make that and this and. Oh, wow. Huh. No, I don't like that. Uh, let's go back to. Command Z. 
Yeah, I got a whole, I'm going over here on the history side because I'm way past a lot of these. Okay, oh, no, drain them out. There we go. <laughs> mm. Well, I, uh, I think that's enough of this. Uh, what about, the, click on the detail button there, would you? A detail. Yeah. Uh, that's, Have you used that? Not on this one. Uh, you can increase sharpening. I shoot with a Nikon, so I usually don't need any of these adjustments. I'm not a, Ca a Canon or Sony shooter. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> I um, found I found something. I think it's uh, click on option and that masking slider. Move it over to the right. Oh yeah, I do this. I this I do. I like, and then it only affects whatever's white. When now if I do this, now it's only going to sharpen that. Yeah. You really can't you, get this. Again, pretty. if you hold down the option key, you'll see it get better. Just kind of in that little area. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to see the, uh, this, but yes. Hold right. down the option and do uh, detail and radius. Move them over to the right. Keep going. Now do the radius. Oh, it didn't show up. I guess you have to do masking a little bit more, but it, it kind of made a, a oh. uh, 3D thing. Anyway, this is just a cheap way of finding out more detail in the, yeah, in the picture I, than what you have. I think, uh, yeah, let's make this a little bigger this time. Okay. This is just not a good picture for showing this. You can definitely see it. Yeah. Some other pictures I've done. Um, but as opposed to going over to Photoshop and getting involved in the detail tools they have over there, this is a good start, I think. Uh, a lot of people, I think uh, Doug uses uh, Topaz. Is that right, Doug? Doug is muted. Oh. Uh, yeah, I use topaz sharpening and dehaze. Uh, de okay. I'm well, sorry, denoise, denoise. Wow. Yeah. This was, as you can see up here, this, I was at F2.8 with five thousandths of a second and ISO 1000. Uh, and so I got a a kind of a soft picture, I guess you would call it. Which, um, uh, let's see here, which one did I shoot sharper? That's still 2.8, that's way off. I, here's F8. Mm. That's good. But again, uh, See, these are out, that part's out of focus. This, this section is in focus because I was so close. I was very, very close when I shot this. It's a 40 millimeter lens. If I was at F8 with a 90 or 120 and filled the same amount of frame, this would all be in focus. Doug has given a great presentation about that, about your plane, plane of focus, or is that what you call it, Doug? Field of focus, yeah. Field of focus, yeah. The field of focus still is pretty limited just to the this section, which is okay, I think. Uh, uh, if we uh, go back to the one I just got, I did all this on, now this is a little bit, almost the same thing. I'm gonna hit copy. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna to go to the one we were just talking about. Uh, this one, and I'm gonna hit paste. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Well, that really shows up on that one because this edge sharpening and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, you know, we can, then we, I pasted those settings, but I can make adjustments. And uh, yeah, I think uh, this is a little bit too much on the sharpening. It looks almost artificial. Uh, let's go to basic. Oh, um, I don't know, I'm not gonna play around with it now, but again, I can go through all of these and change the way it looks to where I like it. Okay. Uh, any anything else? Question for Doug: What does dehaze do? It sort of mixes. I mean, oops, I'm I'm speaking. Okay, it sort of mixes contrast and a little bit of the clarity kind of together. Okay. It has a tendency to give just a little bit more punch to the image, but you have to be careful because sometimes when you're using it, particularly to the right side, you'll pick up a predominant color, usually blue, and the whole image can kind of go off as far as the overall color balance. So okay. use it uh, minimally, I guess is the word I would say. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there anything we want to see from our Facebook page? We've got a couple of minutes here. Oops. Come on, this thing is in the way. There we go. Long Beach. <laughs> How did that come up? Oh. Uh, man, what do I click on to get out of that? I've never. Any uh, marketplace? Was... Home. Home. Uh... Yeah. There we go. Okay. Good. My Zoom thing out of the way. Oh, here, I posted this one. Yeah, and I asked people to vote. This is TIFF versus JPEG, which came up in a recent meeting. We were talking about what's the difference between TIFF and JPEG. I posted an explanation of the two, and then I took a picture that I uh, took and did it uh, as saved it as a JPEG and then saved it as a tip. And wanted to know if anybody could tell the difference and guess which one it is. Well, this is the JPEG. Mm -hmm. And look, pick uh, the blue and the red and the purple. Look at those colors. Mm -hmm. uh, go to the, the uh, tip. You see a difference? There's the JPEG. The reds are a little bit redder. It's popped. Yeah. Now, I don't know why. I mean, the adjustments were exactly the same, but I took the TIFF and saved it to a JPEG and then put it on Facebook. Now, what? I, so then I went to Lightroom and did that XY comparison and the differences on my computer don't show up like they do on Facebook. Mm -hmm. so I think this might have something to do with um, uh, I, how Facebook treats <laughs> the images. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's re really the differences between a JPEG and a TIFF as far as on the computer screen goes, uh, are very minimal. 
Hey, I didn't ask you. I was going to say it was so real. I can hear your dog. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, uh, the, the tip is much, takes a, about a lot more storage space than the JPEG. I think I put that way further down here. Oh, wow. This is great. I haven't got that. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, I came across this. Uh, Amy and I was helping Anthony with some retouching on faces and stuff. And I came across this, which is pretty good. Uh, Amy, Amy is busy today staging her house is for sale. So she couldn't join us. Um, let's look at these. I really like this one. Oh, well, well. It looks like you could jump right in. It's yeah. Big. Each each one serves a different purpose. Uh, right. That, that's the thing I was trying to show is that what are you looking for? Yeah. I, I like I like the black and white. It's I, I don't know it, it the white has a calmingness to it whereas in the other picture because of the blue and the white I don't see that contrast as much so mm -hmm. I think it's a a feeling that you get when you look at a picture and I get a better feeling when I look at the black and white yeah I I like I tend to favor the black and white but both of them are very good thank you uh, Catherine survived her morning bike uh, bike ride. Um, oh, watch that one. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's oh, see. I, I was that. looking for uh, uh, those. That's pretty. We don't have much time. So okay, raw. Uh, oh. Pro Lightroom cheat codes. That's. Uh, this is uh, this is preparing for the Zoomy invasion. It, it, it's again sensation. Uh, what do you call it? Co uh, clickbait on the on their headline, but it's actually some really good um, sh tips in there. I think there's ten of them. Um, oh yeah, tip tip. This explains JPEG versus TIFF. And uh, too bad Lawrence went away. This is pretty, uh, could tell us a little more about this. I think I really like this picture. Mm -hmm. um, here, I I just love this picture. Except, uh, of course, the I had this unavoidable back thing. So I that now this I had to do in Photoshop. Another difference is on this one, you see his back is shaved there. It had surgery. Um, so when I cleaned up the background, I tried to give him some hair there. <laughs> uh, probably, uh, I probably should make another attempt. It doesn't blend in quite as well as I wanted. I think if I worked on a little, spent a little more time with it, I could do that. But uh, this is a great photo, I think. This is a look at that kid. So let's see. Oh yeah, and I also ran into a Vietnam vet, and I just showed the stages that I went through with him. Oh. And of course, I took a picture of a vegetable. I really like this orange truck. <clears throat> In the city of Orange. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, yes, we talked about. Yeah, these, I think we've looked at all of these. Uh, um, all right. Uh, somebody else take over. I'm going to stop recording. Can I make 